Hello again. I was watching David Lammy today as he said that, and I quote, Being an ally means being a verb, is a verb, doing, doing, doing stuff, and so join forces with Black Lives Matter to bend, to bend that history in the right direction. Be an ally to those who are still fighting the cause and remember common purpose. That's what the book's about. It's not just about identity politics. Your story cannot begin and end with your identity. It's about human dignity and that common purpose. And we in this country have got to get into the business of nation building for all of us. We've got to be in the business of providing the good life for all of us. And we've got to turn our back on partisan politics, whether it's coming from the right or indeed the left. Now, none of this will probably make any sense at all to the normal person. It's just the usual waffle and word salad that politicians uh, come out with, especially the less intelligent and articulate ones, into which category I'm very much afraid David Lammy falls. I mean, what does it actually mean? Being an ally means being a verb. Your story cannot begin and end with your identity, and so on. It really sounds as though it's been put together by a computer or by somebody just plucking words at random out of a hat and then stringing them together. It's not even in sentences, really. The book that he mentions is one he wrote called tribes and pretty awful it is too. It begins with the results of Lamy's DNA test which revealed he had lots of ancestors from different places as we all do. Uh, in his case it was Africa and Scotland. I mean that sort of thing's only of interest really to people's immediate family. If I made a video on here and went into detail about the results of my DNA a test. I'm not entirely sure how many people would want to watch that. But still, the Guardian reviewed Tribes, which was what the book was called, and lapped up all the details of um, Lamy's distant ancestry because he mentioned Bushmen and uh, the Tuareg in North Africa and all sorts of other um, exotic places. Lamy, of course, is dead keen on the Black Lives Matter movement, which is um, being rebranded now, as most people probably know, the Black Liberation Movement. Um, he says this, In a way, I'm uplifted by Black Lives Matter, because when I look at protests globally, whether in the United States, in Sydney, Australia, or in London, I see black and white young people saying enough is enough. I saw something different in London, actually, like a hundred police officers being injured and the cenotaph attacked and a bunch of hooligans running wild. But there we are. Maybe those people were joining forces with Black Lives Matter to bend history in the right direction. Maybe daubing offensive graffiti on a statue of Winston Churchill was bending history. I'm bound to say that I find something a little sinister about this idea, the idea of bending history. What is the right direction in which to bend it if you're going to start bending history? In the direction which Lamy approves of? Or, or perhaps in the direction I approve of? I mean, I've got my own ideas on how we could bend history and improve it, but probably everybody watching this will have their own ideas. It's no such thing as common purpose. We, we all have different ideas on matters like appropriate use of history and what history we should emphasise. The more one listens to that man, the less intelligent he sounds and the more like a puppet of people who are brighter and more cunning than he himself. In the description to this video, I provide a link to David Lammy's Twitter so that you can listen to him for yourselves.